Starting about 150 years ago, millions of people moved from rural areas to take industrial jobs in small cities like New York. Almost overnight, the cities exploded into the most densely packed spaces in human history. So our great-grandparents faced a truly wicked problem. How to feed millions of people in the new megacities. How to dispose of their mountains of feces without getting sick. Cities had always produced some of their own food, but now that was not nearly enough. So they brought food from elsewhere. One of the common sources of protein was oysters. Oysters grew in natural reefs in the waters near many American cities like Baltimore, Boston, New Orleans, Philadelphia, and New York. Oysters were harvested from North Carolina, too. Sacks of oysters traveled by carbon-neutral transport on sail-powered schooners to distant cities. Steam-powered machinery was as common in agriculture and fishing as it was in factories and railroads. Connecticut oystermen hired teams of men to run steam dredges to scoop up huge numbers of oysters and ship them to the cities. Americans cut ice from northern lakes in winter and used it to ship meat, vegetables, fruit, and oysters long distances. Transportation plus refrigeration created a new American diet with much more variety. Oysters became a staple food in Kansas City and Chicago, no longer just in coastal places. Oysters feed by filtering tiny plants from the water. Growers figured out that oysters grew quickly in water fertilized by human and animal waste. In other words, within the cities themselves. They were recycling urban waste into urban food. This is what historians call the organic city, a city that produced much of its own food and recycled its own waste. In New York Harbor, in Long Island Sound, in Puget Sound and in San Francisco Bay, states leased or sold the bottom of the sea to oyster growers. Oysters were farmed, an intensive form of aquaculture, and scientists helped. Federal, state, and university researchers helped transform fishing into farming. Huge volumes of oysters and clams flowed into cities. They were the cheapest protein you could buy, cheaper than pork, chicken, or ground beef. They were like the Big Mac of their time, an affordable and popular fast food for the working poor. Oysters were also a delicacy, a party food for the influencers of their day. These women were dancers with the Ziegfeld Follies in New York City. This advertisement marketed oysters as a healthy food for the beautiful people. Health was a major concern a century ago. Millions of Americans, especially children, died as epidemics of cholera, typhoid, and other gastrointestinal diseases swept through the cities. People didn't understand why, but their suspicions turned to their food and drinking water. Rich people ate oysters too. At every grand feast, oysters were on the menu. The rich thought they were safe because they bought oysters from places with high quality control. Their oysters had names like Fine Wines, Blue Points, Lynn Havens, Saddle Rocks, and Rockaways. But the rich got sick too. As cities poured huge amounts of raw sewage into their nearby waters, oysters filtered the disease pathogens from sick people and carried them onto the dining tables of rich and poor alike. Medical detectives used a new approach that they called epidemiology to track sickness from field to fork. Investigations like this one by George Stiles created a new field, public health. Americans demanded governments step in to protect them. Oyster panics were a big reason for passage of the first food safety regulations. State and federal governments banned dangerous additives and polluted food. They closed oyster beds near cities. They set up testing and inspection programs. Together with vaccinations and investments in sewage treatment and water supply, these public health measures saved millions and millions of lives then and now. But governments did not protect clean water. They didn't pass laws to stop pollution. So oyster growing disappeared from urban waters and both wild and aquacultural oysters dropped out of the American diet. In the last 50 years, scientists have reimagined the oyster. They discovered oysters filter and purify water. Oysters create habitat for many species of shrimp, fish, and crabs. They even buffer shorelines from storm damage. Oysters are ecological engineers, and efforts are underway to bring them back to cities like New York and San Francisco. That is a great thing. But today, no one is talking about eating oysters from urban waters. We have forgotten that cities once creatively recycled their own filth into food. Today, we face our own wicked problems around food supply and waste disposal. Is there anything we could learn from that past? History is here to help.